Welcome to MOOC course on Introduction to Proteogenomics. Today's lecture will be delivered by Dr. Pratik Jagtap. He is research assistant professor at Department of Biochemistry, Molecular Biology and Biophysics at University of Minnesota, Minneapolis in USA. His current research interest includes developing analytical workflows using Galaxy platform in the areas of proteomics, metaproteomics, proteogenomics and data independent acquisition data analysis. Dr. Jagtap is going to talk about bioinformatic solutions for big data analysis. As you are aware, big data being generated by variety of technology platforms such as NGS, mass spectrometry, RNA sequencing and many other different technology platforms are contributing towards big data analysis. Dr. Jagtap will talk to us about how to analyze RNA seq files by first converting them into the protein FASTA files followed by locating it onto the genome. He will also provide a demo of Galaxy software and tell us about its application to understand the multi omics data set. So, let us welcome Dr. Pratik Jagtap to tell us about bioinformatic solutions for the big data analysis. I am going to <clears throat> talk about uh, using Galaxy platform for proteogenomics. So, we have been working in this field for last 5 years wherein um, the researchers at University of Minnesota, um, some of them that you see here, we have been uh, trying to put in proteomics tools within Galaxy framework. And the idea was to not only have the Galaxy framework or the tools to perform you know standard mass spectrometry searches, but um, be able to do something more, uh, more complicated like uh, perform proteogenomics analysis. Uh, we also work in the area of metaproteomics, but that is not what we are going to cover here. Um, and uh, one of the things that we have realized is as, as you are working in this field, it is very important to work with the user or a project to make these possible. So, um, the structure is going to be more like a, a demonstration of using Galaxy for, uh, for proteogenomics and I will uh, obviously be talking about a few concepts as we go along. So, I am going to talk about introduction to proteogenomics and multiomics studies and I might actually not spend much time. Um, what I will mostly focus on are the next 3 bullet points is if you have RNA-seq data, how do you use the RNA-seq data to convert into a protein FASTA file and then use that protein FASTA file to search against your mass spectrometric data and then eventually once you have peptides identified from that, how do you make use of that to one uh, look at the spectral quality, secondly uh, to localize that on a genome um, and then basically you know try to make some biological conclusions out of it. So, uh, going through multiomics, um, you know each of these field has its own um, uh, strengths. Uh, transcriptomics, proteomics, uh, genomics, uh, metabolomics, but the, <clears throat> the strength actually lies in making the best use of um, the features that are available in each of these and help you to answer the questions that you as a researcher uh, have put forth. Um, again there are many technologies available, many newer coming up given the fact that there are lot more sensitive instruments as well as uh, instruments that can also uh, have got really fast scan speeds. So, they are not only able to go deeper, but also uh, uh, much more uh, uh, complex data sets can be handled by newer mass spec instruments, which kind of helps you to approach the transcriptomics uh, sensitivity uh, for most of the analysis. So, I would not cover much of this expect, except to say that um, you know because of the ability to uh, not only have tools that work really well in each of these domains, we are also developing now tools so that you can uh, make, make uh, correlations amongst various disciplines. So, um, this is I am sure this has been covered, but I just wanted to reiterate the fact that if you have a mass spectrum and you have many mass spectra, generally if you have a reference protein database, you end up identifying proteins which are uh, annotated or, or, or of known, uh, uh, known proteins identified. However, 
you can actually expand your number of identifications by if you are let us say searching it against uh, uh, you know what was uh, earlier used as a 6 frame DNA sequence genomic DNA sequence or even 3 frame cDNA sequence. But nowadays with the uh, amount of RNA seq data that is available and ability to generate both RNA seq data as well as mass spectrometry data for the same sample one can actually use RNA seq data and I will talk a little bit about that. Researchers have also used uh, repositories uh, like there is repositories like Cosmic and others which actually help you to just go and get data from uh, somebody else's research. So, you know it could be a protein FASTA file or it could be a RNA seq data from representative um, uh, you know clinical samples and you could use that to search against your uh, mass spectrometry data with the understanding that that particular data might actually not match completely because you might have some uh, unique uh, uh, you know sequences that have been expressed in your sample. And this all leads basically to identification of peptides which are corresponding to novel proteomics, which is what we think is uh, proteogenomics is all about. So, um, uh, again we, we, we talked about one data point comparison and that is that is obviously some uh, is, is challenging, but there are methods in place and people are doing that. But then uh, eventually the field is going to move and I am sure has already started moving uh, in looking at time points of uh, you know RNA seq data as well as proteomics data and then trying to merge that. So, that you can make um, a time dependent or temporal analysis of the expression of these RNA and proteins. And that also means there is going to be a lot of data and a lot of analytical power that would be required. So, um, what I am going to start with is uh, there is this instance that we have set up it is a galaxy instance and I will come back to what is galaxy. Um, and I would not encourage you to go on it right now because uh, I am going to demonstrate on that particular instance, but I will definitely encourage you to go to that instance it is z.umn.edu slash galaxy p in Mumbai and uh, it basically is a galaxy instance on which you can use step by step uh, directions which have been provided uh, here in this uh, in this documentation um, and that you should be able to use um, you know use the instance like I am going to use right now. So, let me take you through this. Uh, so, all you need to do is first go on to that website and register and you all you need is a, a login and a password and you know uh, uh, and, and once you register <coughs> you basically would have to go on to this uh, this place called as histories. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so there is a tool called get ORF that is available that can do that. <coughs> you can take the cDNA yes, so you can go to ensemble for example, ensemble has uh, links to genomic DNA and cDNA take this download the cDNA onto galaxy use this get ORF tool and then you should be able to use it ok. So, um, and then if that fails and I am just keeping this as a backup you can also go to this site it is z.umn.edu slash proteogenomics gateway and uh, this is the document that goes along with it z.umn.edu slash pg in November 18. So, this was done last last month so that is why that anyway this if you go to Mumbai slides you should be able to see all of that. So, you have to go to this site and get registered. Uh, and anybody can register to this. This is again on a cloud instance in Indiana University and um, and then what you have in this is uh, so galaxy is basically made up of um, um, you know there are tabs available at the it is a web based uh, platform. So, there are tabs available and you can go to what is called as history and it, you can import the history there ok. A history is basically a collection of your inputs or your any data that you have would have processed and I will talk a little bit about that a little later ok. So, just remember the word histories and workflows uh, at this point. And so, in that you would actually have quite a few published histories and the first one would be a mouse proteogenomics input history data. And then uh, once you go there you, you should be able to import the history. So, you basically bringing that history into your browser and what it does is actually gets uh, 
uh, you know, uploaded onto your, what is called as a history panel. So the panel on the right here is the history panel. And all you have there are these input files. Uh, there's a protein FASTA file, uh, which we're going to use for database search. There is a mus musculus uh, GTF file, right? And that's used for uh, estimating ge uh, genome coordinates. Uh, there is uh, another protein FASTA file. And then there are MGF files that you have generated from your, um, from your uh, mass spec data. And uh, sorry, this, this is actually a FASTQ file, not a FASTA file. So the FASTA file was, was somewhere here. And then uh, you also have a BAM file and a BED file. And I'll talk about that, why we need that later, right? So these are the inputs that one uses. And uh, the data set used here, and this is just to uh, mention that this is a representative data which was published in 2014. It's a database about B cell development. And uh, the researchers were interested in uh, comparing uh, two different types of B cells uh, in its development. Uh, and we basically, they had RNA-seq data as well as uh, proteomics data for that. And, and we have basically taken a part of this to, to demonstrate the use of Galaxy, OK? So um, Galaxy uh, is the interface, the web-based interface. Um, you can select the history, so we are uh, selecting the input file. So remember the five files that I talked about earlier. These five files, that's the input files. And then uh, you can, once you import the history, you can start using the history, which means your history becomes, um, becomes active. And then you select a workflow. So what's a workflow? Workflow is a basically a set of tools that one would use um, in sequence so that you can process the data. So just imagine you have your input files, right? And uh, one of the input files needs to be converted uh, from one format to another. So it would use one tool. So you know, you asked about converting cDNA into a, 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 a three-frame translation. So there would be one tool. But the, the process doesn't end there, right? You want to use that in your next step. And so maybe adding contaminant sequences to this would be the next step. And so there could be a tool which could upload those contaminant sequences. And then there will be a tool which will merge those together, and so on and so forth. So this basically becomes a workflow uh, wherein you're not only taking one tool and running it and going to the other one, but you're taking the input, and you can run this workflow of multiple tools, right? So you take, select a workflow uh, from one of the tabs. You import the workflow, and you start using the workflow. And once you run the workflow, you get an output that you, that you want. So a workflow could be as small as you know, two tools, or it could be as large as 20 or 30 tools, right? Depending upon how complex uh, analysis you would like to do. So um, I'll come back to the Galaxy interface. So this is the Galaxy interface. And if you go to z.umn.edu slash galaxy p in Mumbai, you should be able to come to this. So a few things to kind of know about Galaxy. One is on the left side, we have what is called as a tool pane in the sense there are tools that somebody has developed and implemented in Galaxy. Um, and that comes with, uh, so let's say there is a tool like get ORF. It would have a place to show an input file. So it's a, basically a GUI interface for a command line interface tool, right? So um, if you have, um, uh, let's say there's a tool, it gives you where to have an input, what are the parameters that need to be used. Um, and so once, let's say you have a, a input file here and you use that tool, the processed output will basically get added on uh, in your history. So input file, data processed, processed data, right? So you kind of start building a history. And that's why this is called the history play pane, where you're starting with the input and generating input file. And the central pane is a place where you can view your data, you can uh, look at the parameters, and you know, there are other things that you can do in the, in the central pane. So that's, that's about Galaxy interface. In this particular uh, demonstration that I wanted to show you, we're going to cover RNA-seq to variant FASTA database conversion. So um, if you have RNA-seq data, how do you convert into a, a protein FASTA file? Then take that protein FASTA file and search it against, um, uh, you know, against that protein, uh, against the mass spectrometry data. And once you have identified your peptides, you can process them to either visualize this spectra or even identify the localization uh, on, uh, on the genome, right? And th this all is possible because somebody has worked hard to put this tool 
into Galaxy and also uh, put it into workflows. And so each of this is a workflow. So if you, if you observe closely, once you go and look at the slides, you'll see each of this is a workflow which is kind of connected to each other, right? So uh, the objective of the workflow is to basically show that uh, if you have genomics data, uh, you can generate a customized uh, database uh, to generate a database that you can use it for your proteomics experiment, or you can also use RNA-seq data to do that. And then once you get the data from that, uh, you should be able to uh, modify your gene model. You might actually find that there are some peptides that have been identified um, in, in regions that you, you know, you, uh, you would not have found earlier because of, and because of some genomic rearrangement, you found them um, as a result of uh, even it could be just a single amino acid variant or it could be an insertion or deletion. So, what this workflow, first workflow, which takes in RNA seq data and generates a protein FASTA file, does is it generates a protein FASTA file, but it also generates a genomic mapping information, right? So, uh, this is the input file that I described earlier. And it has basically the FASTQ file, which comes from your uh, RNA seq data, right? Uh, there is a GTF file, which is a gene transfer format file which basically has genes as well as genome coordinates and which chromosome it comes from and so on and so forth. So this basically helps you to uh, connect your, um, uh, your, your protein FASTA file uh, or the accession, protein accession numbers to your genome coordinates. We also have a known protein FASTA file generally from Unipro that we use. And then we have the mass spectrometry files, so the MGF files, right? So this GDF file is also available in on uh, Ensemble. Ensemble has a GDF file for that particular organism. So you should be able to get that. So this is something that you generate through your experiment. This is something you generate through your experiment. This is publicly available, Unipro. And this is also publicly available. It gets updated, uh, I think, every three to six months. Uh, if you're doing metatranscriptomics, if you're doing microbiome analysis, or if you're doing a two organism Oh, you're talking about contamination. Yeah. Um, so, no, uh, you can still use it. You might need to do some QC filtering. Uh, you might, you know, so you're going to do some amount of mapping onto your genome to only select those sequences that are of interest to you. But if you're doing a multi-organism uh, analysis, then obviously you want to retain all of that. Does that answer the question or? Sure, okay. So again, we, we start with the, uh, sorry. We start with the input files, the five files that I talked about. Um, and then uh, we basically start using the first workflow, which is the database creation workflow. And I'll perhaps use this time, uh, you know, so this is where you can go to workflows. You know, once you go to that site and uh, download this workflow, Again, import the workflow, start using the workflow in, wherein you, you can say run. So once you import this workflow, it actually shows up in your workflow, list of workflows. And then what it shows you here, and I really wish I could have shown you on the, uh, uh, you know, in the, on the screen, but it basically gives you three input files uh, to select to run your workflow. So what you see here is, um, you know, fastq file as the first input, uh, GDF file as a second input and FASTA file as a third input. And then there are these series of tools that are used uh, so that it can, you can convert into a protein FASTA file eventually, right? Um, so, is this tool is really available or it is for just some time? Like, uh, because I'm saying this is class number eight. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, we, we can keep this available for three months, but I mentioned there is another uh, website called Proteogenomics Gateway, right? Z. The slides as well. Uh, that could be something you could use. That would be available uh, for much longer time. No, both are Galaxy instances. So once you have these inputs, you click Run. So imagine there is a button Run here for people in the back. Maybe you can't see, but if you click the button Run here it runs, it starts running. And what it does basically is it starts adding these outputs from each of these tools about this. You know, it starts building the pastry. Now, when it starts, basically it's grain color, so the job is in queue, right? 
uh, when the job starts running it's, uh, it turns yellow and when the job is actually successful it turns green. So, each of these would have some output generated from that workflow. It is generally bad news if it is red which means there was some error that was generated very early in your analysis and that is when you go back to your developer or your infrastructure specialist to ensure that uh, you know uh, something wrong did not go on the, the side of the network or, uh, or the tool version and so on and so forth. But uh, just let us imagine that this, this is how it works right I mean uh, in the sense let us let us hope that uh, uh, in our case uh, we get this outputs and we have actually tested at least for this data set multiple times to ensure that that is how it works. Um, then we basically uh, so let us let us talk about this this particular workflow in general right. If you look at that workflow and expand it it basically is made up of two parts it starts with the fast queue file that I talked about. Uh, but it also has GTF file and um, uh, uh, other files here the uh, third input that we use here the faster file here thank you. And then um, it can basically it is divided into two different groups and I will I'll show you the details of this later. But the first one basically looks at single amino acid variants as well as indel variants where the second one basically looks at uh, uh, you know junctions uh, novel junctions and so on and so forth. So, uh, these are the just different kind of variants that you can identify. For example, uh, single amino acid variants and indels can be identified by this first workflow while the second workflow identifies the uh, rest of them here. So, um, if you look at this details and hopefully this is little more clear, clearer, you have the fast queue file, you have the genome coordinates and you have the GTF files right. Um, so, the uh, Initially what the first tool that is used is it uses the RNA-seq data, uh, HiSat is the tool that is used to align your RNA-seq data right. Um, so, let us say these are all your RNA-seq files, uh, it maps to the gene or genome and then uh, you can uh, you know you can see where your, your RNA-seq reads fall and based on these now you can uh, you can perform variant calling and that is where the second tool which is free base. So, this tool here takes in all these aligned files and then starts finding something which is different than your reference genome right. So, it is try, trying to find a variant in your sequences right. So, the, the green dots that you can see here um, that is where it starts identifying those. <coughs> And then so, for example, if you are looking at this I am basically going to focus on this region here and uh, as you can see here this is your uh, these are your RNA seq reads and you can see that uh, the sequence in the reference genome has got a, a G in it right uh, while uh, in, in and you see a, a green uh, uh, adenosine there right. So, you can see that in the RNA seq data you are actually finding a variant. Now, that is what the, the uh, tool does is it kind of catches this information right. So, the HiSat aligns these RNA seq data, Freebase uh, finds the variants in it, and then the next tool, which is custom ProDB, the one that I am this one here, basically looks at the reference genome, uh, these variants which have been identified by uh, Freebase, and then it takes in this and then translates not only the original sequence uh, if it is you know if, if there is no variation it just identifies uh, translates that or it can also translate the variant sequence and it kind of uh, puts that in the accession number that you know this is the variation along with the genomic coordinates. So, you have all the information right there right and so that is this part that we talked about right. So, you have if it identifies your um, single amino acid variants as well as indel variants. Now, this part here is basically your part wherein you are identifying uh, you know ch changes in the junction and so on and in your assembly. So, for that again you start with uh, alignment right. So, these are your aligned files and then uh, it uses a tool called as string tie which converts your uh, you know trans you know your assembled transcripts into uh, into basically larger sequences and these are in this case this would be uh, exons that you are looking at right. And then once you identify the exons it uh, assembles this into an assembled transcript and that assembled transcript is 
generate you know it is uh, subjected to 3 frame translation to give you a faster sequence right. <coughs> now, one of the advantages of this workflow is you, you do not have to actually take all of those and then convert into protein faster sequence. It does a GFF compare. So, it compares with the GTF file which is basically a list of all your known gene coordinates or uh, uh, assembled uh, genes and compares it with what string tie has found out. And if there is a uh, you know if, if there is a, a variation from that that is the only thing that gets uh, uh, you know retained and then converted into protein FASTA file right. So, this output that you see here would basically have only novel transcripts uh, from your um, assembly. In conclusion, today you have learnt that genomic data and proteomic data as well as the transcriptomic and proteomic data are interchangeable and how one can make sense out of these multi-omic data requires lot of skill set, lot of experience and need for many softwares. You got a glimpse of how one can process multi-omic data sets in today's lecture. However, in next lecture Dr. Jagtap will continue and he will talk more about the bioinformatics solutions for big data analysis in which way you can make a complete workflow and try to accomplish that. So, next lecture will also be by Dr. Prateek Yaktap and he will finish this whole module of looking at bioinformatics solutions for big data analysis. Thank you.